Two words, freaking magnificent. So this is my drum kit and I want to talk a little bit about it. Uh, I want to show you what's on it and um, tell you all about it really. But first I want to say a couple words about uh, music and drums in general. And uh, it's going to be really difficult for me to say that the first instrument was a drum. But I can definitely say with no doubt in my mind that the very first music was percussive. And just look what it's look what it's become. Look what we get to be a part of this. Just look at this instrument and just imagine initially the birth of percussion, the birth of music in general. This is its current form. This is what music is. This is what music has always been. And we get to be a part of it. Some people make their living with it. Some people just get to enjoy it. But whatever it is, I get to be a part of it and I feel very, very privileged to do so. Um, so this is my kit. It's made by a company named Obelisk and I absolutely am in love with it. So uh, they, these drums were probably made somewhere in the 1980s. I'm not too sure. I don't know too much about these drums actually. The drums are five ply maple with a finish ply, so six plies of maple. And it's in a natural finish. Uh, the sizes, I will go through the sizes. All of the sizes of the drums are, or read all the dimensions of the drums are square, meaning that the depth is the same as the diameter. It would fit in a square box. Doesn't look like it, but it would. It goes like this. This is a 14 by five and a half. Of course, this drum is not square. 14 by five and a half, eight by eight, 10 by 10, 13 by 13, 16 by 16 and 18 by 18 and then the bass drum is 20 by 20 uh, What did I want to say there is a Missing 12 inch you might be thinking why is there a 13? That's a little weird uh, The reason there's a 13 here is because this kid is actually an 8 piece, but I'm I took the 12 out The reason for that is because if I go 8 10 12 then 13 and then 16 there's a very small gap between the 12 and the 13, and quite a large gap between the 13 and the 16, if I had the 12 here. Uh, I like tuning the drums to rather low pitches. I like to tune them to their natural, fundamental pitch. And when, I've done, when I do that with the 12 and 13, they're very close in pitch. They're, all, they're really almost identical in pitch just because of uh, the size of the drum and, of course, like the, the nature of the shell. So I thought, especially this gap between the 13 to the 16 was too big of a gap, in, uh, especially directly after the 12 to 13 transition. I, I just thought there was something off about that. Like the 12, 13 was so close and these were so far. So what I've done is uh, 8, 10, 12, 8, 10, 13, 16, 18. So the, the, the scheme has a symmetric spread with the 13 as a focal point because it goes two inch gap, three inch gap, three inch gap, two inch gap. So the spreading is symmetric, so I can get a very wide range of uh, tonal frequencies, but yet I don't feel all cramped up in uh, this little area in the mid-range, it's just like all cramped up and there's like this huge gap here. No, it's nice and spread out. And then there's the bass drum, which is just lovely. Uh, the heads on the drums, are they not gorgeous? They are on the toms. All of the batter heads on the toms are black suede emperors and everything on the resonance side, everything's brand new by the way. Uh, aside from me hitting it for uh, tuning purposes with a mallet. Everything on the bottom side of the drums on the toms are clear ambassadors. Can't go wrong with clear ambassadors. They're just there and the top head is um, really a really big change for me. I haven't ever had two plies on this kit ever or any kit that I've ever owned. I've only really ever bought ambassadors. I've never tried a G1. Would you believe that? Uh, except on a kit that wasn't mine. So I played I played on G1, but um, so, and then the snare drum has a Remo Black Suede Ambassador, because I love single ply on the snare, with a Hazy Ambassador on the bottom. The bass drum is a Black Suede, Black Suede uh, Power Stroke 3, and on the resonance side, there's a, uh, Power Stroke 3 Ebony with a 5 inch hole cut into it, which is a little bit big. 
There's no muffling in the drums. I do not muffle drums. Uh, well, I guess the power step three is pre-muffled, right? So um, I do want to quickly show you the snare drum because all of the drums are individually, individually numbered. It's going to get kind of dark, but I don't know if you can see this. Look at that serial number. A0099. And these drums are individually serial, uh, are individually numbered. This is the first drum. Then it goes to the bass drum, which is A0100. It goes 101, 102, then 104, because 103 is the missing 12, 105, 106. So if if I'm, if I'm to assume that the numbering system is logical, I would have to say that this is one of the very first kits pumped up by Obelisk. Really early in the production, right? That would be sensical. And uh, like seeing as this is massive, I'm, maybe Obelisk made, made smaller kits, but on average, I'm gonna just say it was a five piece. What's, what's uh, 100 over five? That's, um, uh, whoa. That's 20. So like I would just say maybe this is like the 20th kit produced possibly considering on average maybe a five piece kit were produced by Obelisk. Um, so I'm really happy about that. I think this is, it's in really great condition. You know, the, the laughter here is like cracking but you can't do anything about that. Um, everything's in good condition. There's a little bit of rust in some places but you know, otherwise it's in fabulous condition. I put S hoops on my snare drum. S hoops both top and bottom. Um, I'll discuss the reason for that. Is because these shells are made by Keller, and their shells are actually marginally smaller than the typical diameter that you would find in whatever uh, imperial sizes. The reason for that is because when you have a regular drum and you have a regular drum head, this is actually the whole reason that Evans came out with her. 360 technology thing is because if you've got a regular shell, the crimped area, the, the, the where the, the head starts out planar in the middle, it's very planar, it's very flat, then, then it immediately transitions into a curved surface. So on the edge of the curved surface, where it's like, where it's just completely curved and then the planar surface starts about here, this is where the bearing edge lies, completely on the curved surface. So you can rock the drum head back and forth on this curved surface. But if the shell is physically smaller, it always lies on the region where the head is planar. It will never be, in this case, it will never be on this crimped, bent up, nasty area. It makes the drums easier to tune. You have to make sure to center the head really well. But it will never be on this crimped area where it's just, just crammed full of inconsistencies and like, um, whatever, right? It's only on the flat portion of the head. But there is a distinct disadvantage to that. The bearing edge is exposed. If you look on a regular drum and you put a stick right next to the hoop, the tip of the stick right next to the hoop, you will not be able to hit the bearing edge because of the curvature of the tip of the stick, the bearing edge sits in that gap where you cannot strike it. The contact point is further in than the bearing edge. Not so with this drum with these drums. I can actually strike the bearing edge. I can hit it with a stick. It's quite far in, which is why I got S hoops on the drum, on the snare drum, uh, because I hit this drum the most and I, there's a little flange covering that bearing edge. I can't, uh, the bearing edge is, is not, does not, uh, it's not accessible. Misguided stick, boom, just smash the bearing edge. I do not want to do that. So I have to be, you know, have good aim, good setup, right? Um, so the, the shell is smaller on all the drums. Uh, you can actually see uh, these, these black spacers that are, in be that are under all the lugs, between the lug and the shell. I was told um, by a professional drummer that that was actually rather strange that he had never seen that, that he's always seen a uh, hardware attached directly to the shell. And uh, because this sh these shells are slightly smaller, this, this tension rod actually angles slightly outwards because the hoop is actually a little bit too big for the drum. So they put the spacer so then they can line up the tension rod a bit more. But even with the spacer, it's already tilted out very slightly, very small amount. 
but without that spacer, it would just be it would just be uh, obscene, really. Uh, it would just be completely out of alignment. I put nylon washers under all the lugs, except for the bass drum and the snare drum. Uh, the reason I didn't do it is because uh, these ones already have metal washers that are not removable, but all of these have metal washers that were removable, so I swapped them out. And uh, on the bass drum, it just won't, the nature of the, of the, of the claw just won't let, a, won't let a washer sit in nice and flush. Uh, let's see, uh, talk about a bit about the symbols. I've got Sabian hand hammered 14 inch fusion hats, uh, Sabian um, 22 inch rock ride, uh, Zildjian. Oh, this is also a Sabian. Sabian Signature Alien Disc, 10 inch. It's got rivets in it. And uh, Zildjian Medium Thin Crash, 18 inch. Zildjian uh, Thin Crash, 16 inch. This is a Wuhan 18 inch China, one of the originals with no logo. And uh, a Wuhan 10 inch Splash. Um, on to the hardware. I play Axis, I play an Axis Percussion. Uh, first generation double pedal. Um, I say first generation. This is the very. This is from the first production, the very first batch ever produced by Axis. This is of the first fifty-ish or something units that was ever pumped up from Axis. The original, right after the prototype. And uh, so this pedal is older than me, uh, quite a bit older than me, two two years or or more older than me, and it's absolutely flawless. It's completely free of slack. I think that's astounding. And the thing is, it's been played for so long that on the foot plate, on the footboard, there's actually missing aluminum. There is, there is, it's been played so long and so hard that the rubber from a shoe was able to remove significant amounts of aluminum from the, from the footboard. It's been played that hard and that long and it maintains zero slack. The fact that something can be engineered to that level of precision just astounds me. And the fact that that's even possible astounds me. But the fact that it's even achievable, in, like po possible in, in principle, of course, but achievable through, through just very careful work is astounding. And I cherish this pedal. I really love it. First generation Axis Percussion Model A. I uh, use this marksman beaters, but I, I modified it modified it by sticking on a uh, felt patch. This felt patch is the stuff that you put under the legs of tables and chairs so that um, they don't rough up your floor. Uh, I, I love the feel of the marksman beater. I absolutely love it, but um, I didn't really want that really strong attack with this kit. I mean, the Power Stroke 3 array has just insane attack, especially with that hole cut in the front, which is 5 inches. I play a Gibraltar direct drive legless hi-hat stand that is clamped over to this, this, this stand here. Uh, this is a Tama Road Pro snare stand. Uh, this sta uh, the rest of the stands here, actually this stand and this stand are modern pearl stands. Like maybe from like 2005 or something. And this here is a Gibraltar six inch cymbal stacker. All the other hardware is like 1970 or 1980 something. Um, really old hardware, uh, random brands really. This here is a Premier. Uh, this here is Pearl. What's holding up this, this, these two drums are Pearl. What's holding up this drum and this cymbal are partially Pearl and I, I think that's Dixon. And this here, this, this, this stand on the right, is it Dixon? Yeah, Dixon. And then this stand here on the right is a Premier. Uh, let's see, what else did I want to say? Uh, not much else other than, oh, right here I've got a, oops. I've got a LP rock cowbell mounted on a Gibraltar boom stand, boom arm. And this here is a, LP Black Beauty mounted onto the bass drum hoop via one of the Gibraltar Calvadel bass drum hoop clamps. Uh, ah, right, the hardware. Everything, all the rack toms are mounted via 
He had these uh, rim suspension system made by Gary Gogger, who is an amazing guy, I must say. Um, these are from 1985. These are the original rims. This is before they turned to alloy or aluminum, rather. This is uh, just uh, chrome-plated steel, and they make the drum sound absolutely phenomenal. So with the floor tom, they're actually on uh, pearl suspension feet, which uh, work really well for their price. So, like considering their price, they they probably achieve about fifty percent resonance um, compared to holding it by its rim and just striking the drum. If I call it at one hundred, this is like fifty, maybe a bit less. But uh, I had ordered the extremely expensive floor tom dynamount systems by uh, Mr. Gogger, and they did not do a good job on this drum. Not a fault of Gogger because the shells of these drums are quite a bit smaller. What's happening is a spring will sit here, supporting up the drum by the lug. But because the drum was so much smaller than the rim, usually the spring would just sit right up, right up here and surround the rod. But because the rod was further in than, than the hoop was designed, the spring was pulling outwards on the shell from four points. So it was completely restricting the resonance of the drum. So I talked to Gary Gogger and uh, we discussed at length what might be the issue. We isolated the issue and he just suggested a different product for me, which is the Amazeballs Pro version of the R40 uh, suspension feet. And he calls them the Flex Tips, which is basically a stiff spring mounted on a leg. It has a wider range of total frequencies that it can accept, that it can resonate at. Whether, uh, and he told me that for the suspension feed, it's limited to a very restricted region where it will resonate in sympathy and allow the drum to actually have natural, its natural flow. Um, let's see, is there anything else I wanted to say? Yes, uh, this is what I sit on over here off screen. This here is my throne. And it's made by Tama. It's got a backrest. And it's fairly sturdy. It's got some embroidering on the back. I don't know why they put it right here. You can't even, it's this Tama right across here. Like the fanciest thing is just obscured by this like huge thing. But I mean, this huge thing's gotta be here, right? I mean, I, I can't offer a better design. I'm sure what there is is uh, the backrest was optional or something. And uh, I bought this new, but for some reason I don't re really remember too much about it. So the, something that's weird is I don't remember buying this hi hat stand. It, it's just suddenly part of the kit for some reason. I just have I just don't remember it at all. Uh, I do remember this though, and uh, it's a great throne. I love it. Sit on it, and I put the backrest as far forward pos as possible, so just supporting my back. Um, that's pretty much all I gotta say. So like. Please leave a comment. Tell me about my drums. Uh, anything in particular that you've noticed, but really what I'm interested in, I want to know more about these drums. These are obelisk drums. I know very little about, about them other than the fact that they're glorious, but um, I know next to nothing other than the fact they're made by obelisk. They're very early in production, I would assume. I, I would assume. And they're Keller shells. And there's something about Keller shells. The thing is, I, I know this is a nice kit. Like, let's just say I'm gonna spend a moment and imagine my dream drum kit. There it is. This is my dream drum kit. I feel there would be, it, it would be silly of me to want to upgrade this. I feel the only thing that might be able to top this might be a collector series DW kit. Just as big, maybe bigger, with two bass drums, and just, extru just, just perfection. But this, this is pretty much that to me. And this is nice and vintage-ish and just gorgeous. I mean, modern drums, they don't look like this. Natural maple, and it's not only natural maple, look at how it's aged. I took off this hardware, it's a completely different color under that hardware. It is so much lighter. This is absolutely gorgeous to me. I love how this kit looks. Um, yeah, please tell me about these drums. With Keller shells, the thing is, like Ayot used Keller shells initially. I think Tai uses Keller. 
and the original DWs. And you know what people think about those original DWs. They freaking love DWs, the originals. Like the older ones. Um, some people hold them in higher regard than the current DWs, which are now produced in-house. So this is like a top of the line kit. Like, uh, it, it just, you would, you would, you would need to delete some bounds, just, just absolutely put a lot of effort into finding a nicer kit than this, is my opinion. And in such good condition, I love it. And, um, that's really all I have to say about my kit. I love my kit, but I know very little about it. Please tell me anything you know. You know, feel free to comment on the kit. Like, um, I think it's lovely. I hope you do too. If you don't, let me know. I want to know. And if you do think it's lovely, I would like to know that as well. Anything on your mind about the kit, I would love to hear it, really. But especially about the drums themselves. I really want to hear something about that. And um, if you want to see, like, close-up pictures and stuff, there's going to be a thread on drummerworld.com. I'll probably link to it. The funny thing is the thread's probably going to link to this video, too. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, I forgot to mention this legless hi-hat stand is clamped to this splash stand. So these are one and the same. And, um, yeah. Nice and moderately sturdy. Uh, I've mentioned everything, right? Drum, snare, bass drum, cymbals, auxiliary percussion, hardware. Nothing to it. Um... Yeah, pretty much all there is. Thanks for watching. Please let me know anything you want to say.